um, it was really hot yesterday and obviously you know it stressed my body some I am already sweating big time all right and toward the left is Caesar's Palace with its genuine Naga Coliseum It's hot out here. There's no shade. I've been here for five minutes already. It feels like a half hour. Um, Bryce Canyon, it is overcast right now. We might even see a little rain, but it's so much cooler up here. So with that, I'm going to sign off for this day, day two, uh, Bryce Canyon. It was amazing. I'm so glad I came here and saw this place. <laughs> Okay, uh, people are still sleeping, but things got pretty wet last night. Uh, they had a ban on campfires, which it didn't matter because you couldn't have enjoyed one anyways. It rained pretty steady, oh, I would say five hours until about midnight. And so not a heavy rain, but a steady rain. My tent is okay. It's not great. Uh, I did have some water get in, my feet were getting a little wet, and uh, not my greatest night's sleep, but I'm not exhausted, so I must have slept some. Bike's all wet, my jacket got wet, my, a t-shirt got wet, but that's about it. We will, uh, I've already put um, chain lube on my chain and I checked my tire pressure so the Strom's ready to go okay we're in the pines I got coffee. Excited to go uh, back down briefly into Arizona and then up into Colorado and we will see Mesa Verde today. Um, for those that are not familiar, well, you're about to find out what Mesa Verde is later in this video. Well, drying time affords me a second cup of coffee this morning. I've got things hanging over here. i got to get my shadow out of the sunlight so they dry faster. I've got things on those rocks over there that are getting sun. And the tent, I may pull the stakes and move it where it's in the sun better. There, I just moved it from over there on the tarp into the sun. That should help dry it off.
So here's a little something different. I stopped at the cemetery in a small town called Orderville, Utah. And I just, I find cemeteries fascinating because you can reflect on lives that were lived in this place. Uh, let's just see who's here. So here is Mary Crofts. She died December 6th, 1880. So what was her life like? And does anybody come out to visit this grave anymore? Can't imagine. This one beside it has no legible markings on it anymore. Um, you know, unknown. But lived an entire life like you and me. Then somebody updated this stone. Indian missionary and peacekeeper. Died 1878. Born 1814. Jeez. Dr. Pretty Meeks was born in 17... Oh, gosh. 1793, does that say? Died 1886. I mean, Dr. Pretty Meeks... Wow. Just after the American Revolution and Declaration of Independence, he was born. He lived through some amazing stuff. Of course, we're living through some amazing stuff right now. Okay, so I googled Dr. Pretty Meeks, and turns out he is a Mormon folk uh, hero of sorts. Uh, born 1795 in uh, South Carolina, he was a... Uh, Doctor of Thomasonian Medicine, which was uh, medicine taught by some guy named Thompson, who uh, it was an herbalist kind of medicine. And uh, he's in Mormon literature. He traveled with um, Brigham Young and helped settle the area. He was in a wagon train of 171 people and a bunch of cattle. And he took care of the sick on that uh, trip. Went all over Utah. Helped community by building cabins. His own cabin there is preserved in Parowan by the Parowan Heritage Foundation as the last pioneer farmstead remaining in the area uh, listed in the Register of Historical Sites. And uh, he didn't move to Orderville, where he now lies, until 1879. So, big character in uh, Utah history. Just stumbled on his stone. Pretty cool. Anyways, enough of that. I mean, I could kind of do this all day out here, but uh, sometimes I feel like people should visit a cemetery about once a week, just for perspective. Um... Like I said earlier in one of the previous videos, or maybe it's in this video, I don't know. I haven't edited this stuff yet. Um, why am I out here doing this? Because this is the end game, folks. And uh, I'm doing this while I can. I think any one of those folks out there would really jump at the chance to do what I'm doing right now and my day will come it is what it is not really sure what these are up here they got to be pretty challenging to go up and paint After leaving Orderville, uh, my route took me across the southern part of Utah and I crossed into the northern part of Arizona around uh, Lake Powell and then across 
northern Arizona in ancient lands of the Native American Hopi and Navajo uh, people. And you can really just feel the, the ancientness, the, the history of this land and how it goes way back. One thing I absolutely love about the V-Strom 1000 is it has the power to overtake on passes. Uh, it, it's just ample power. Uh, there's no problem, even at higher speeds, uh, getting around vehicles that are moving slower than you uh, and doing it quickly and in a safe way. Because of course the safest way is to get back in your lane as quickly as possible on roads like this. And the V-Strom will do that. My path took me across northern Arizona, which is a very flat landscape that's peppered with rock formations that jut up from the earth uh, in a very dramatic way and provide great eye candy. I then uh, went up in elevation as I entered Colorado and the landscape changed a lot. I finally got to my campsite at Bryce Canyon National Park and set up camp. Well, I think I found home sweet home for the night. But once again, I'm hearing thunder. <laughs> I hope I don't have another night of rain. Absolute first thing I've done is get my sleeping bag and all of the wet clothes from yesterday out and drying. You can see how the water seeped up on the lower, you know, the bottom where my feet go. So thank God I had, you know, some dry area up here, but uh, it still wasn't nice having cold feet. Well, one way to look at this is to be annoyed that a second night in a row I'm getting rained on. Uh, but the other way to look at it is I got through my entire ride without rain. I got my tent set up. And because, uh, you know, now I'm in the tent. <laughs> and then it started, like right after I got it set up. So I got everything in here with me. Mm, sorry, <laughs> but uh, I'm dry for now. So I just saw a big deer, no antlers, probably a doe, as I was walking back from the uh, restroom. And of course I didn't have my phone with me or any of my cameras. It went into these 
you know, this brush over here, it's in there somewhere. I've been walking around the perimeter of it. Of course, I won't be able to capture it for you guys now, but it was really fun. Beautiful deer. There they are, and that car is going to scare them away. But there they go. I bet those two... Oh, yeah, they see them. They have some antlers, so those are different deer. I think. I'm looking at the phone. It's hard to tell. Yeah. What the heck? at me. <laughs> Go about your business. With camp set up and the rain having subsided at least for a while, I got back on the bike and headed into Bryce Canyon to investigate uh, what treats it had to offer me. Okay, so normally this is a museum to the cliff dwellings. Uh, there were like whole societies of literally thousands of people that lived in these cliffs here in Mesa Verde. Um, going back to, I believe the pamphlet I got said 400 AD. So pretty old society. And uh, they built these adobe dwellings in the cliffs that became pretty... These aren't it, but this spruce tree house is supposed to be uh, one of them. And that was built... Yeah, shoot, I can't get down there, maybe. We'll see. There they are. Those date, I believe, I read around 1150 to 1250 AD. And so with the rain and uh, the rain last night, it took me so long to get out of, um, where was I, Bryce Canyon, that it took me all day to get here to Colorado, to Mesa Verde, although I'm glad I'm here. And it put me pretty late in the day. Uh, and so there's a tour of probably the most amazing of these dwellings. If you can believe it, these are not it, I guess. And uh, 
I will not be able to show those to you, unfortunately. Uh-oh. Spruce tree house closed. Rock fall. Oh, bummer. Trail open for petroglyph and spruce canyon trails. Okay. So I'm sorry, but uh, I ran into a locked gate. You'll have to forgive me the altitude here. It's almost 9,000 feet, so um, I'm not used to this thin air, but, uh, and I was just coming up a big hill. Anyways, native people, there's, it's hard to see them from here. I saw it in the pamphlet, but they've got this whole underground chamber system where they could have fires, but then they had worked in air ventilation so that they didn't, you know, die of the smoke. The smoke was vented out in a particular way, and in the cold winters, they could be warm down there as a community, and they would literally have hundreds of families living in these cliffs. And they had uh, trade. There were people who uh, were better at pottery and better at weaving, and some were better at hunting or cooking, and, and uh, you know, they had a whole trade system built. So I really wish I could have got down there, but I guess it's not going to happen. They're just built into these cliffs. So I just want to be clear in case any of you decide you want to come here and see these cliff dwellings. You actually can go in them, walk around within them. Um, just not today, unfortunately. But, uh, I wish, <laughs> you know, you win some, you lose some. This is an amazing place with a lot of, uh, clearly a lot of history. Just amazing. All right, back to the tent. <laughs> Hopefully, that's it for the rain. Maybe I could have a campfire. Okay, finally a campfire at night. Clouds are still pretty threatening, but for right now they're not dropping anything. And so just uh, some wrap-up thoughts for the day. Um, Mesa Verde is definitely worth it, but maybe call ahead and see if the attractions... Uh, attractions is the wrong word. The sites are closed. Um, you know, weather pending. Uh, the ride here through, I was in New Mexico for a brief second, um, Glen Canyon, uh, Glen Canyon Dam and Lake Powell was pretty amazing. Uh, not quite Hoover, but wow, what a dam. And uh, what a technological feat and um, then the riding, just America's big wide open west is very big and very wide open. I rode for hours and hours and hours today and it was just stunning beauty everywhere, but also nothingness. Like there was no restaurants. Um, there was a gas station when I needed it. But that was it. And, of course, I'm not going to eat food at gas stations because that's me. Um, live to be 100. <laughs> um, what can I say? I'm really glad I did it. Long ride in the saddle. And seems like a lot of cowboys that lived in this area probably said the same thing about this part of the country. A lot of time in the saddle. So... That's it. Signing off from Mesa Verde. Tomorrow off to uh, Colorado Springs and Pikes Peak. See you later.